Nora has been asking for a while to paint our My Life um, sh doll shower and sink mirror combo. So we thought we'd share how we did it. This is the start. We've already taken off the shower curtain, off the clips, and we're going to make a new shower curtain as well. Okay, so for the shower, we've got a screw here and then a screw here to take off this arm. And then this guy pops up and I think I'm gonna have to tape those off and the, maybe the bottom, although I think the bottom has screws, we might try taking the bottom off. And then we're gonna experiment with this. It's got a bunch of screws around this side. Okay, for the shower, it has a couple screws on the top that we're gonna try unscrewing. for the railing rod to hold on the shower curtain rail. So we're gonna see if that easily comes off after we undo the screws. Sometimes they feel like they're undone and they're not. So there are those two screws. just kind of pops out so that's easy and that'll make painting that a lot better and then we're going to do the same for the bottom here with a couple of these screws And then we have this separation. The only last thing is this guy is like a little pinch, but I don't think I'm gonna get that out very easily. Um, let's see, we've got a letter opener. We need something kind of skinny. Yeah, I don't think I really wanna mess with that because if I break it, it won't stay. So we're just gonna tape off around here. And this whole thing, it looks like this just will pull right off of there maybe that's what it looks like but it's not actually working so we're just going to tape that whole thing kind of in a bag and then tape it around here and then we're going to tape off this one down here to paint and then these little guys well we'll probably just paint those it won't be a big deal oh can you see those little guys that hold the basket on okay because it's got a thin blade um, and have an adult help you with this if you're um, a kid and it kind of had to pop up the top one is my trouble spot I had it off a second ago you kind of gotta finagle it a little bit to get that back panel off after undoing all the screws there we go. And then it kind of just comes off if we can get it out of all these little spots. That top corner is like, I don't want to come out. So then, yes, the back panel is completely separate. You could paint this or not. It doesn't matter because you don't see it. It's fully set it. So here's the trick within here. 
there is wiring. So definitely take out the batteries before you take any of this stuff off so that the wiring now has no current in it. There's no electricity to the wiring. So that means we can pull out these, oh, maybe. I was thinking we could just pull these little guys out, but we can at least unscrew the front with the screws here and here on the bottom. That'll take off this whole spot, I think. We might be able to take off the top part too, which make it so much easier. And then the mirror is actually a peel and stick mirror. So I feel like we can peel that away and then just re-glue it when we're ready. So we'll see, I'll keep you posted. I undid four screws in these deeper holes and then the two down here. So you're just gonna have to kind of turn it over to make sure those screws are all the way out and they'll fall if they're all the way loosened. You might have to tap a little bit. Um, but it looks like we have a few more to loosen in here. Sometimes it feels like they're all the way loose and then they actually aren't. Um, but once we get them all loosened, it'll come up and come off hopefully pretty easily. So let's see here. Two more. Where's our last holdout? Oh, down here in the corner. This one seems to be, there we go. So there, now we have that part fully separated. We have our sink fully off, which we're not painting our sink. Um, so we're gonna set that aside with our white bottom and our gray arm. Those are things we're not painting. Okay, so I think inevitably we're gonna have to paint the button um, here and then I'm still gonna work on the screws up here to see what I can detach from this spot. Okay, so the, um, it unscrews and comes away, but I don't wanna unhook any of the electrical because I'm not sure about these, how it's attached, and I don't know if I could get it back. I've replaced lights before, but this is a little bit different, and I don't wanna ruin it and have the electrical. So what I'm gonna do is, um, wrap a bag around it. I'll probably cut this bag smaller and just kind of move it as I spray paint. This is I what might. we did. We were able to get this off. We had to squeeze these. We used little pinchers um, to push it through the hole. Um, and I think worst case, these type of pinchers, if it doesn't stay real well, once we put it back in, we'll put a dab of glue on the back. This is the stuff we're not painting. Um, we wrapped the um, controls and painter's tape. I couldn't undo the mirror, so I taped it as close as I could. Um, we taped the wires. It's, pro it's okay if some of the wires get um, paint on them because they're covered in plastic. That's not the actual electrical part of the wire. But we taped kind of around here, and then we taped the light up. So we'll kind of spray paint, and then once we spray paint under here, we'll kind of flip this, and I think it can sit on the mirror, and we can spray paint the top section. Um, I taped over the electrical um, thing. That's where like the battery goes. There was just a little bit of opening. This, once we took the circuit board, we released the circuit board with a screw. The little button popped off. So we taped that from the back just so no tape paint gets all the way through. And then this is the back of it that Nora does want to paint. So we're gonna paint all the blue parts. And then these are screws. I kind of just laid them on a paper plate and wrote where they went. Um, and then these go to the light. I just didn't have room, but I know those are separate. So that's how you can kind of label where things go. So we're gonna go paint and we'll keep you posted. job but I hope I got um, it as much covered as possible on the pieces that you see the most um, and then maybe I'll do a little spray paint like in here and stuff so I'm gonna take the tape off, tape off. okay so it's all back together um, I think it looks pretty good I think it'll look great in her bedroom or the bathroom, bathroom. <laughs> because the um, it won't have any light shining through it. I think when the light shines through, you see a little bit of the turquoise in spots. And then we have a little bit of turquoise peeking out from underneath, but not too bad. It's not really noticeable. I think the pink was a great choice, Nora. Yeah. She has selected a bare fabric for the shower curtain, so we'll see how that goes. 
Okay, so Nora has selected this fabric for her shower curtain, <laughs> um, which I think is pretty funny. We might actually have to change her artwork in her bathroom now. But this is the old shower curtain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a square the same size as this out of this, but I'm gonna add, um, what is this? About an inch to the height. And then I'm gonna serge all the edges. That's what this little um, thing is here, it's a serge. You can also do a zigzag along the edge. And then I'm gonna fold over the top an inch like this is and sew it down. And then I'm actually gonna do buttonholes, I think. Cause I don't have grommets this big. I do have a grommet maker, but not that large. Um, and I'm gonna serge the edges and not hem them all because this is fabric is thicker and we want it to still feel flowy. So I'm just gonna continue what they did with the serging, which is just a quicker, cheaper way for them to make this. And then I'm gonna try and do buttonholes. If you don't have a sewing machine, you could sew this not by hand, or you could actually cut it a little bit bigger and turn it under like this and use fabric glue, and then it would look like a finished hem. Um, and then just cut slits with um, scissors. Those will not last as long as a buttonhole or a grommet. This is a grommet. A buttonhole and a grommet are what make it stronger and have more support so it doesn't pull and rip out. So without a buttonhole or a grommet, you would probably have to replace it sooner, but that might not be a big issue. So yeah, I will kind of show you different steps throughout the way. Um, of what I'm doing. Okay, using my rotary cutter, I cut the rectangle. Now, the biggest thing about this is you want to get the height right because the shower curtain rod is at a certain height, so you want to make sure you get that correct most of all. It can be a little bit wider if you need. I think this one ended up being a touch, no, it's about right, maybe a tiny bit wider. I thought it would be less wide, but the height is the most important. One the edges are surged. If you are um, somebody you know has a serger, I highly recommend that mode just because it's quick and easy and it still looks nice and finished. What I'm gonna do now is on the top, and my top on this matters because my fabric is directional. So if I did my turn over here, and then I turned it around, uh-oh, my bears are upside down. So always make sure you're going the right direction. I'm gonna fold this over one inch, and then right at the edge of that serging, right along there, I'm gonna do a straight stitch on my machine so I can get a nice lip on the top for my buttonholes. Okay, so I hem the top edge and I measured to make sure it was the right um, size. I'm gonna have to ask my daughter if she wants me to tie a ribbon on like this, but it's literally just um, kind of sewn on there. Um, so that can be the very last thing. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna line up those top edges. And if you make your shower curtain a little bit wider than the old shower curtain, you couldn't do this, but because mine is the same size, I'm going to just mark with a pin where each of these, at the center of each of these grommets on the new fabric. And then that's where I'm going to do my buttonhole. Okay, it's all marked out. The trick with buttonholes, if you decide to go that route, is you need a button to determine the height of your buttonhole opening. So I found a button that's slightly smaller than that ring. That will give me a buttonhole that's probably about the height of this ring and I could probably go a little bit smaller. I have a lot of buttons and it would be even better. So maybe we'll go smaller. And then you put that in your buttonhole maker on your machine and it does the work for you pretty much. If you've never done buttonholes before, look in your sewing machine manual or look on YouTube for tutorials. I'm sure there's tons on there. If you're going to cut a slit, how I would do it is leave that pin in, fold this in half, so this top edge lines up with that seamed edge. Take your scissors and cut a little slit that's probably about that far from the sewn line to the top edge. And then when you open it back up, 
you'll have a straight slit right there that's about the right size for your little um, ring to go through on the shower cut curtain rod. Okay, I've got my um, foot all in for my first buttonhole, so I'm gonna put it to work. Okay, so here we have our completed shower curtain with all the buttonholes that line up with those buttonholes. So we're gonna go put it on and see how it looks. Okay, our transformation is complete. We've got the bare shower curtain and the pink shower and backsplash. So we're gonna go put it in Nora's dollhouse. Okay, so we put it in Nora's bathroom and she rearranged a little bit. We found a little bit um, of maybe a better, we're not sure yet, layout. And we're gonna have to change the artwork or do a little, some, little something different to the artwork. Here we go, what do you think?